In this video, I think we'll start to take a look at construction assemblies. We'll talk about how uh, Honeybee and Energy Plus work with construction assemblies, and we'll look at a couple of different tools that we have for managing and, and um, uh, dealing with construction assemblies in our, in our PHPP models here. So hopefully you were able to assign all of the boundary conditions and surface types and names to all of your first floor geometry without too much trouble. And if, like me, you've set up your grasshopper scene in, in this uh, fashion, you should have something like this where you're pulling all of those parameters in from the first and the second floor, feeding all of the uh, results of that, that new component into our honeybee face uh, component, and then um, uh, and then progressing that along to the rest of the um, to the rest of the honeybee model. So um, in our in our last video, we did not assign any construction assemblies. We we left that blank, and as a result, if you remember, let's take a look. I'll just bring up a quick panel here. If we were to look at the construction assemblies, the EP constructions for any of our six surfaces. They are all currently set as, as nulls, as, as nothing. As a result, Honeybee is going to assign default constructions to each of those surfaces. So if we don't provide it any information, Honeybee is going to try its best to figure out what it should do, and it's going to go off and make some decisions. So what has it decided to do? Well, we could, we could take a look in, in several different ways, but let's just use the native Honeybee tools to take a look. And let's just use some of the new visualize components. So if I just go to Honeybee, go to visualize, and let's, um, let's just color, color by face attributes. And I'm going to take the faces output and connect that up to the Honeybee objects input. And we want to see construction. So to get that, I have to come over to the um, Honeybee Energy component. And here under Basic Properties, I can find um, Honeybee Face Energy Properties. And so that would be things like construction and R values and U values, etc. And so if I connect that up to the attribute, notice over here in my Rhino scene, I'm now getting some coloration. Let me go to wireframe. So it's obvious. I'm now getting some coloration. And so we can see that something called generic roof is applied to this upper polygon. Something called generic exterior wall is being applied to the, these uh, vertical surfaces. And then I've got this yellow polygon on the bottom. The yellow corresponds to generic interior floor. Again, where did these constructions come from? Well, Honeybee decided to use these constructions. So again, because we haven't given it any information, it's going to assign these generic constructions until we tell it otherwise. Now, these constructions, these are Energy Plus constructions, these are made of one or more individual materials. So in Energy Plus, we have the constructions, and the constructions are just a, a collection of individual materials in some order. And those are then used to calculate U values uh, by, by Energy Plus, or effectively. Uh, okay, so how do we how do we control that? How do we how do we make that more um, intentional? Well, we can. Let me get rid of this. So we can, of course, come into Honeybee Plus Energy. We could come into Constructions, and we could build our own opaque constructions inside of Grasshopper. For sure, we could absolutely do that. As I said, though, I prefer to host all of that type of information, for the most part, back in the Rhino scene. If you're doing something where you're you know, testing a thousand different options, or you want some sort of, uh, um, you, wanna, you, you do want to control it inside of Grasshopper, that's totally fine. You can absolutely still use those tools. Um, but I'm going to show you a way to do it over here in the Rhino side. And to do that, let's use our um, let's use our, our upper surface. Let me go back to ghosted. Uh, let's use our ceiling surface as a as a first example here. So in order to assign a material to this polygon, I'm going to use that same set surface params. And this time I'm going to come in and I'm going to go to select assembly. And from the assembly, I'm going to select the assembly in this list. Well, there's no list. What list? Well, we've got to populate this list. We have to build some constructions so that they show up in this list. Okay, so we're going to use a different tool to do that. 
We've added in the PassFiles Tools toolbar, we have this library component editor tool. So if I click this library component editor tool, this um, little library uh, parameter manager will pop up. This is uh, just a little um, data input manager that we've built here to manage your PHPP libraries and components. And there's a couple different ways that you can work with this. You can either enter information directly, enter, enter here, or you could come down here and import data from a library file from a PHPP. So we can either type in all the information that we want, one, one element at a time, we can customize it and do whatever we want here, or we can import a bunch of information from an existing PHPP. So if we already have a PHPP with a bunch of materials and assemblies built into it, we can pull those in using this import functionality down here at the bottom. Well, let's hold off on that. Let's just build a quick assembly. So let's just build a quick assembly. Let's say, for instance, that I wanted to build my, let's say, Ed's ceiling assembly, or we'll call it construction to keep it consistent, energy plus nomenclature. So my ceiling construction has only three parameters. So for the simplified assemblies for PHPP, we're only asked to input just a very few parameters. I need to input a total U value, a total thickness, and then I need to say whether or not the assembly is interior insulated. Hmm, okay, well, um, let's see. Well, let me pull in a sketch of the ceiling assembly that we want to model for this little building. So again, if you've gone through any of our design PH or Therm or um, PHPP classes, you'll be familiar with this. Um, but let's say that we want to build this ceiling assembly for our little building here. It's a truss roof, so we've got the cords of the truss, and we've got, you know, uh, what is this, um, 600 millimeters, uh, 24 inches of loose fill cellulose insulation. So let's say, just for purposes of argument, that this is the ceiling assembly we want to build. Well, okay, how do I get that into here? Well, notice this is a much simplified entry. We can only put in the total U value, the total thickness, and the interior insulation flag. So we haven't yet built a actual constructor. Um, we haven't felt it was uh, uh, necessary yet, but maybe by the time you're watching this, we'll have a we'll have a constructor. For our purposes, what we end up using is just the um, either the PHPP constructor, or more likely, we go off and calculate this inside of a program like Therm or Flixo, uh, SciTherm, PassiTherm, some sort of two-dimensional or three-dimensional heat flow simulation, which gives us very very accurate U values for our assemblies. So, what would that look like? Well, let's, let's use the PHPP constructor in this case, and let's build this assembly in PHPP. So let me, let me load up my, let me load up a PHPP. Let me, um, I'm gonna actually cancel out of this library constructor for just for the moment, uh, and let me bring up a PHPP. So I'm just gonna bring up our source PHPP. I'm gonna load up the source PHPP, and all I'm gonna do is use this as a, as a U-value constructor. So I'm just gonna use it as a, a little side tool. You know, I could go off and do this in any sort of numeric constructor, you know, follow the um, ASHRAE Handbook of Fundamentals chapter, what, chapter 25, tw chapter 27 procedures um, to calculate your U values or ISO 6946. You just, you know, follow those procedures. I'm going to use this little calculator, which is built into um, PHPP. So in the U values page, you know, built into PHPP here. So, you know, this will be my, um, my ceiling construction. And um, here I'm just going to designate that it is uh, obviously a roof and it is adjacent to the outdoor air. And let me bring back up, where did that go? Let me bring up, here's our ceiling assembly. So we've got a layer of loose fill cellulose and then a heterogeneous layer of timber and then a layer with our gypsum board ceiling. So we'll call this insulation. Well, I guess we should call it, we'll call it cellulose insulation. And cellulose insulation, what does that have? That's like an 034. 
and let me bring up our thickness again. Thickness 21.5546 millimeters there. So 546. Then we've got cellulose insulation. Uh, 0.034. And here we'll have um, uh, truss cord. Is it with an H? I don't know how to spell that. Uh, anyway, 1.3 uh, timber, something like 1.3, right? Would be something somewhere, somewhere thereabouts. We could we could look that up. Actually, let's look that up. Uh, let me give me a second. Okay, um, this is just the uh, 2017 Ashray Handbook Fundamentals, Chapter 26. This is just you know that table of information with all of our conductivity values here. So let's just make sure we're using the right the right number. So I'm going to scroll down, 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 down until we get to what? There we go. Until we get to woods, and of course, um, typical. Oh, 0.13. It's a good thing I good thing I looked it up. I was off by a decimal point. 0 0.13 for spruce pine fir. That sort of generic framing lumber. 0 0.13. There we go. Better. Uh, so, uh, and that's going to be at 89 millimeters uh, for thickness there. Um, of course, you know, that's how you would uh, build these. And I guess I should finish this off. Gypsum wall board. And I suppose I should look that up too. Um, but that's how you would work with this. Is it, you know, very common to sort of go out to uh, external reference documents like things like you know Ashray Handbook of Fundamentals, um, ISO ten four five six, um, ISO six nine four six, those types of things. Um, anyway, gypsum plaster. That's not really that's not really it because we want plaster board. There we go. Gypsum or plaster board, zero point one six watts per meter Kelvin. It's fine. 0.16 and uh, what was our thickness? 13 millimeters, half inch, so 12.7. Uh, there we go. So there's our PHPP construction. Of course, um, if you're confused by the PHPP constructor, I would highly recommend that you take a look at any of the PHPP training courses offered through folks like Passive House Canada, uh, uh, New York Passive House, or North American Passive House Network if you want to know more about all the details about how to use these constructors and exactly what's going on in them. Um, you know, there's a lot of good information there available through the Certified Passive House Consultant or dedicated PHPP training courses. So we won't go too much into depth on this uh, right now, other than to say we're going to use this as our, our builder to get what? To get this number at the end, a U value of 0 0.053. A U value of 0 0.053. Okay, well, what am I going to do with that information? So we've built our ceiling. We have a final total U value of 0 0.053. Well, let me come back to Rhino, come back into my Rhino scene. I'm going to come back to my Passbus tools. I'm going to go to this library. And open up the library again, and let's do this again. Ed's um, ceiling construction, and I'm going to input a U value of 0 0.053. Where did that number come from? That number came from the PHPP, 0 0.053. Notice I also have a total thickness of 64 centimeters, so if I come back here to my Come back into Rhino, and for thickness, the meter, uh, uh, the thickness in meters, so um, 0.643, is that what it was? 60, oh, 64.8, sorry. Come back here, 0.648. And then lastly, is it or is it not interior insulated? If it's interior insulated, you would put a one. It is not interior insulated, so we would put a zero. Um, by the time you see this, hopefully I'll have changed this to be a little checkbox. For now, you just put one or zero. Um, again, one if it is interior insulated, zero if it's not. That corresponds to this guy right here. So if you want to know more about what does it mean to be interior insulated? You can read that little helper hint right there. Um, but that interior insulated corresponds to this drop down right here. Uh, again, one if it is interior insulated, and zero if it is not interior insulated. Okay, so we've now 
entered or added a construction to our assembly. And so if I say OK, now if I select my ceiling, I go up to my Set Surface Parameters tool, and this time come down to the Select Assembly. Notice that Ed's ceiling construction shows up on the list. And if I now say OK, go back into my grasshopper scene, if I push the geometry through again and take a look at the Energy Plus constructions, which are coming out, notice that mostly they're null, except that I do get Ed's ceiling construction assigned to the ceiling. The rest are still empty. I haven't assigned anything to the rest of the surfaces. I've only assigned this one. But all of that information is flowing through correctly. And notice it's building the materials and the construction all by itself. It's sort of um, uh, setting all of those things um, uh, as, it, as it likes. This information will now flow through into our PHPP. So let's take a look at that. Let me come over here. Oops. Let me go to my PHPP. Let me close this PHPP. I will say don't save. I, I could, but I don't want to save it. I was just using it to calculate that U value. And now let me come over and let me spool up Excel. So I'm coming over to my export to PHPP. And I'm going to go to this open Excel workbook. And I'll turn it on by uh, setting this to this toggle to true. And give it a second to spool up. So there we go. So it's booting up. And as soon as this is all booted up and everything is updated and flowing through, so this should flow through in a second. So this is connected. My Excel is connected there. All of my Excel objects are connected. And so there we go. Everything flowed through. And now if we scroll down, so I'm in my U-Values worksheet here. Here's Ed's ceiling construction with a U-value of 0.053. So a u-value of 0.053, final u-value of 0.053. So all that data flows through properly into the PHPP. If I was to come into my areas worksheet and go to the areas worksheet, and I was now to come down and find my ceiling construction, which is this guy here called a different name. I should probably change that back. And I was to come over here to the right. Notice that it has applied to it. Ed's ceiling construction. So all of the parameters that I set back in the Rhino scene are properly flowing through into my Energy Plus and Honeybee model and then into the PHPP. And all of that information, like the U value, is all flowing through as well. So hopefully that made sense. Uh, as I said, as I have said, there are many ways that we can choose to work with these tools. I like to I like to assign all of this information back in the Rhino side. But again, if you want to use the native Honeybee construction tools, you go right ahead. You can absolutely use those as well. So when we come back in the next session, we will finish off our assembly build out by just building a few more assemblies. We'll assign those to the walls and floors, and then we'll uh, wrap up our section here on the envelopes. And so I'll see you back in the next session.